Well, thank you for coming. I do St. Mark's Gospel in two halves, and we have an interval, and I am doing the authorized version, also known, of course, as the King James Version, which first appeared in 1611, and I haven't changed it. <laughs> I try and make that absolutely clear, because after a performance recently, a lady came up to me and said, may I ask you something? And I said, yes, and she said, did you write it? <laughs> well, when I first did this recital, I actually had a letter from a man asking where he could find a copy of the script. <laughs> I wrote back in almost any hotel bedroom. <laughs> Mark is believed to be the first gospel, the first to have been written. And it is believed that it was related to Mark by Jesus' disciple Peter. And if that is the case, then it is the nearest thing we have to a first-hand account of the life of Jesus. Or rather, to the ministry of Jesus, because after a few introductory verses, Mark plunges straight in with Jesus beginning his ministry in Galilee and calling his first disciples. There is no account of the nativity in Mark. For that you best read Luke. And there's not a great deal of Christ's teaching in Mark. There's no Sermon on the Mount. For that, of course, you must read Matthew. But Mark records the travels of Jesus, many of the miracles, the confrontations with the scribes and Pharisees, and he paints a wonderful picture of the relationship between Jesus and the disciples. Sometimes quite a stormy relationship, and sometimes, I think, a humorous one. This little book is a copy of the New Testament which I keep on the table just in case. Now, the style of Mark's writing is very spare and to the point. But towards the end of the Gospel, when Jesus is arrested in the middle of the night in the Garden of Gethsemane, Mark suddenly tells us a seemingly irrelevant little story about a certain young man who arrived on the scene, clad it would seem only in a sheet. It takes a couple of verses. And there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Well, many people believe, and I agree with them, that that certain young man was Mark himself. It's perfectly possible that he was in Jerusalem during Jesus' last days. And it's perfectly possible that he heard the great multitude with swords and staves passing by his window, and that he rushed from his bed to try and warn Jesus. This would certainly explain why the story is there. And the modesty of the account is typical of the writer. So, when we reach that point, perhaps you'll remember that that certain young man was Mark himself. the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which will prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair, and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. 
and straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he'd gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets, and straightway he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What are we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her, and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers' diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him, and when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man. 